saying, please don't let him be Muslim. Please don't let him be Muslim. And when it comes out that he's Muslim, do you automatically panic? Is there a sense of fear in the community from this? Well, the first thing that came to my mind is just very recently, we just buried an American hero who was a Muslim, Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. And there was all of this goodwill, not just towards Muhammad Ali, but also de facto to the American Muslim community. And we had a national celebration on the life of Muhammad Ali. And uh, when I found out that this uh, person who committed this massacre was a Muslim, uh, my thought was many Americans are going to forget about Muhammad Ali, forget about their Muslim neighbors who are contributing to society so much in so many forms of, from business development, charity, and we're going to get concretized by this one person who, who was a, a very hateful man who had a number of issues going on. Sure, but the, the fear is very real and there is backlash, and do you think that's fueled a little bit by our presumptive Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump, and his ban on immigrants coming into the country. I, be I, I believe that words uh, do matter and what Donald Trump's rhetoric is very uh, dangerous. Just a few days ago in Great Britain, uh, Joe Cox, who was a British MP, who was uh, murdered and when the attacker stormed towards her, or rushed towards her, he yelled out Britain first. And this is like a white nationalist organization that talks about banning of immigrants and Muslim immigrants in particular, just like what Donald Trump was talking about. And I'm not sure if he really realizes the type of toxic environment mm -hmm. that he is brewing up in our society where it's, it's not even just about immigrants, but it's Muslims like me who were born and raised here who have families going back generations where this type of rhetoric is putting at risk. Nolan, does he fuel the fire, Donald Trump? Well, of course. I mean, he's insane and he's, uh, you know, he's not doing the country any good. He's not doing his political party any good. But let's think about the root cause here. This is not a product of the American culture. This is a product of the ISIS culture, these radical groups who are, have found a way now to radicalize American citizens and have them do the work for them. And I think that's what we need to be focused on here. This is not about gay rights. This is not about gun laws and what have you. It's the fact that we don't have a defense against young people who get radicalized, whether they're white supremacists or, or followers of ISIS. We don't have a defense for these disenfranchised people who become radicalized on the internet and create these heinous crimes. ISIS no longer has to slip people into a, beyond our borders and into this country. We're doing their work for them and we don't have an answer for it. And that's where our focus should be. Sure. It, it is absolutely a conjunction of ISIS culture and American culture. How so? And here's how we know. Because when ISIS wants to recruit people in this country, they say, you have all the tools. All you need is to swear allegiance to us and go right there in America where guns are more easily available than any place else in the Come world on. and you're in business. That's what their recruiters say. In you Boston, they carried online. out their attack with a pressure cooker for crying out loud. You are not going to keep terrorists from getting their weapons. I mean, you, you just aren't. They got them in Paris, and Paris has among the strictest. How many people did they kill with a pressure cooker? It, they maimed 246, and a lot of those people were very seriously injured and could have been killed. In Paris, with the strictest gun laws in the world, they managed to get their weapons. This is about getting out in front of the radicalization and trying to figure out um, what is causing the disenfranchisement and what are making these young people vulnerable to these hateful messages. Representative Moss, after last Sunday's shooting, you tweeted, quote, I literally never want to hear again that LGBT people in the bathroom are a threat to public society. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm kind of sitting over here digesting Nolan's comment that this isn't a, about gay rights or anything like that. This was an LGBT hate crime in addition to a terrorist attack. And what I said was it wasn't influenced by American culture. This is, this is right out of the ISIS playbook. I would say ISIS that there, kills homosexuals in their country. There is this under the surface acceptance that gay people in this country are less than. And there's no doubt in my, in my mind about it. And the reason I tweeted that is because there's this notion in this society that somehow, you know, we're the predators, you know, when they paint us all with this broad brush about nervousness about us going into the bathroom. And the reality reality is, is that we're the ones that are targeted. And I'll give you the most innocuous example. We pass resolutions all the time in the Michigan House of Representatives. We declared July ice cream month. We declared October apple month. When we wanted to have a resolution to simply declare uh, June as LGBT pride month, the
the Speaker of the House threw that in the garbage. So we can't even get an acknowledgement that we exist in this so state. So do you think this young man here, a Muslim, a Democrat, an ISIS follower, with a father who put anti-gay rants on video, anti-American rants on video, was influenced by the American culture? Look what happened the next day. And not this hateful day. ideology he swore allegiance to? Look what happened the next day in Sacramento with another viral video that went around with that pastor saying, I wish he had finished the job. I wish he had killed all of them. That's, that's and, American culture right there. And certainly we have a problem with that. But when you look at the influences on this fellow, he was an ISIS follower. ISIS is committed to killing gays and has been killing gays. That's their well, message. But, but, well, 95, but 95 percent, 95 percent of ISIS's victims are actually straight Muslims throughout the world. Of course. So, to be, so it, it's not. But, they, but you they can't hate, deny but what, they hate, they, they that hate, that's their agenda. But they hate whoever uh, doesn't follow their ideology. Absolutely. But also in Los Angeles, now, there was a pride parade there. Mm -hmm. And there was a man who had his car loaded with guns and bombs. And this was a white Christian guy. And thank God the uh, law enforcement was able to intercept that. But Absolutely. Th there, there is an issue that we have to admit that there is a uh, strong hatred in our society and towards uh, people in the LGBT. And, and, and there's ISIS, ISIS did not no invent about that. ISIS and there, did not invent and violence against gay people. There's this notion. No, there's this notion too that this LGBT club was a sanctuary for the LGBT community because we can't be outwardly uh, displaying our affection. I can't sit in the same uh, side of the of the restaurant booth as my boyfriend. I can't, you know, hold hands with my boyfriend down the street. And I was at LGBT Pride, Motor City Pride last weekend, and there was a big uh, nightclub afterwards, and people got patted down before they went into the nightclub. That's American culture right there because nobody knew what attack would have might have happened uh, in that club here in Detroit. And I don't think we can discount the fact that this fellow might have been gay himself, according to the reports we've That's seen very so true. far. Some reports have come out about that. Uh, you called it straight privilege, which I thought was interesting during, uh, during the commercial break. We have unfortunately have to wrap things up here and head to break.